The good news about this, you know the graphing steps here. We've been doing the graphing steps. That's not changed. So let's jump right in. And let's start with x plus y greater than or equal to 6. What do you know? How do we graph? Same old, same old. No different from last night's homework. We need what form? Yeah, we're looking for y equals mx plus b still, right? I'm even going to put a little reminder up here for you. y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope, and b is your y-intercept, yes? So I don't know if you need that reminder or not, but just in case. In this case, what do I do to get y by itself? Okay, if it's x plus y, subtract the x over. So then I'm going to have y still greater than or equal to. Instead of 6 minus x, I personally prefer to say negative x plus 6. If that's the case, what's my slope? Slope is what? Your invisible negative 1, which as a fraction is negative 1 over 1. And my y-intercept is 6. Okay? So, start with the graphing. Y-intercept of 6 is going to be where? Up 6 on the y-axis. A slope of negative 1. We're going to... Okay. Rise negative 1, run positive 1. So down 1, right 1. Down 1, right 1. Over and over and over. Yes? Or up 1, left 1. Whatever your preference is there. Now... Before I connect my dots, I need to ask a question. What kind of line do I want to use to connect these dots? Because we do have a choice today, and it does matter. What do you remember, Dane? Solid. A solid line. Why a solid line? Because it's included with the dotted line. Okay. So your choices are a solid line, or he calls it a dotted line, which is probably what you've probably heard before. I tend to say dashed line. Honestly, same thing, dotted line, dash line. Kind of compare it to, would this be a filled-in circle or would this be an open circle? If it says greater than or equal to, you would fill in the circle, yes? So we're going to fill in the line, and this is going to be a regular, everyday, solid line we connect our points with. Nothing fancy on that one. So I'm going to connect my points with a solid line. And then, we have one more question to ask ourselves before we move on. It's an inequality. So now we have to ask ourselves where we shade. And you have two choices. And it's 99% of the time, it's always the same two choices. You can shade above, or you can shade below. We're always going to use those when we have the y equals situation. What do you think? Y greater than or equal to negative X plus 6. Am I going to shade above or below? What symbol is this? Okay. Greater than, yes. Or equal to, but greater than is what matters. Where would greater than tell you to shade, above or below? Does it make sense? It makes sense in my brain that greater than tells you to shade above, yes? We're going to shade where my y values are greater than, which means I'm going to shade above. Now, above this line, above this line means above it. In this case, it happens to be the top right corner, yes? Now, keep in mind, we're not going to be done with this problem. 
So don't get too crazy with your shading. But you want something indicating that we're shading above the line. Or maybe you're the type of person that wants to come back and do your shading at the end. That's fine. Now, I am going to give you a couple little uh, cheat sheets up here. Okay, we did a solid line because it was what? Equal to. So whether it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we're always going to do a solid line. So anytime the equal to is there. If the equal to is not there, we haven't run into this yet, but we will. So if it's just less than or greater than, you can call it a dashed or dotted line. I don't care what you call it. If your brain is more familiar with dotted and that's what you want to use, that's fine. If you prefer dash, that's fine. I just technically looks more like dashes, so that's why I say dashed line. What's the other cheat sheet we need? We shaded above because it was what? It was some type of greater than. So you're going to shade above when it's greater than or equal to or greater than. What's the other option? If it's some type of less than, we're going to shade below. Okay? So those are some little hints for you. Maybe you know, maybe you don't need to write this down, but for the rest of us, there's some hints to write down, okay? Okay, you ready for the other half of this problem? Other half of this problem, y less than or equal to negative 5 halves x plus 10. Good news? It's already there, isn't it? Do I have to do any math with it? It's already in y equals mx plus b form. So what's my slope? Down five. Yep. Negative 5 over 2, so down 5, right 2. What's my y-intercept? 10. So start by making your point up at... 10, so we're going to count up 10. Negative 5 over 2. So I'm going to rise negative 5, run positive 2. Rise negative 5, run positive 2. Okay. Rise negative 5, run 2, all the way down as far as you can go, if you want. What's the question I'm going to ask myself? Before I even do, go shading, though. Whether it's solid or uh, dotted or dead. Yeah. Solid line or dotted, dashed, broken line. What type of line am I putting in here? It's a less than or equal to. Equal to's are always solid lines. So traditional everyday solid line. So if you forgot to ask yourself, it wouldn't be a huge deal. And then after we determine the type of line, now I'm ready to talk shading options. You've only got two options, above, below. What do we have here? This was y is less than or equal to. Or where do we want y values that are less than? That's going to be shading below, shade below.
Where does below this line look? It's slightly angled this way, isn't it? So below happens to be left. You can't always say below is left. But with this angle of the line, we can. So I'm going to shade below my red line here. And again, don't go too crazy until you know where you're landing. Now, if you stop here and leave this as your final answer, I'm probably going to take a point off. Because I don't feel like you know where the solution is. And maybe you don't know where the solution is. So maybe you deserve that point off. But I don't feel like you know where the solution is. Okay. Where is our answer? Where are we looking for? What should you be drawing attention to so I know what I know that you know? What do you think? Oh, space in between the between where the red line is going down and the uh, shading of the blue line is going up. Okay. So I like to say where the shadings overlap, right? Where they come together. So it's right there in that little triangle up top. Now. If you leave it like this, I don't really think you understand that. So, can you shade it a little darker? Can you shade it a different color? You know, if you're just, you know, using a typical pencil, which is perfectly fine, you have some light shading, you have some light shading. Can you darken that shade a little bit? Yes? I personally, on the BenQ, that doesn't really work. I'm going to use a different color. Now... I feel like I know where the answer is. Okay? So make sure, make sure I know that you know where the solution is. Now, I will say in homework, I don't know for sure, but what I do know about is Math Excel in the past. And Math Excel in the past, they won't necessarily let you graph the blue shading, graph the red shading, and then just show the overlapping shading. I think Math Excel in the past, if I recall, they would only let you shade here where the final answer is. So just be aware, you might not have the luxury of shading this, shading that, just going for the final answer. And maybe you prefer it that way, but my sleeves are attacking the board. Whoops, too much there. Okay. Does this sound a little bit familiar? Maybe. Okay. You're not the only one to say no today. I've had several people look at me like, nope, don't remember it was fun. And you know what? That's fine. Are you catching on to what I'm doing? Is that a better way to ask? Okay. If you're looking at this, you're like, yeah, I don't remember doing this. Okay. Are we catching on to it? That's what matters. Okay. Okay. Next problem. Let's practice. I don't feel like this next one is any more difficult. So... There's good and bad to that. Um, my shading kind of went over too far, didn't it? Oh, well. X plus Y greater than 4. What do I have to do to graph that? Yep. Subtract the X over. Y is greater than... I'm going to say negative x plus 4. That means my y-intercept is 4, and my slope is negative 4. Okay. Negative 1 is the invisible number. Negative 1 is a fraction is negative 1 over 1. Okay, well, let's, here we go. Y-intercept 4, up 4. Slope of negative 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. Or if you prefer, up 1, left 1. Two questions. First question. 
what type of line are you connecting your dots with? The symbol is just a greater than. Greater than has no equal to, so dashed or dotted line. Again, I don't care what you call it. I call it a dashed line just because as I'm connecting, I don't feel like I'm making dots. I feel like I'm making dashes. Dash line, dotted line. Maybe you want to call it a broken line because it's broken into pieces. I don't care. Just know what you're doing there, right? And after you get the dash line, the other question is where to shade? Above or below? Because it is greater than, I am going to shade above. Above means. Right there, yes? Okay. Y greater than or equal to negative one half X plus one. Good news, it's already solved, yes? Slope of negative one half, y intercept of one. Y intercept of one says I'm going to go up one. What's a slope of negative one half say? Rise of a run. Now you have a choice. You can either say negative 1 over 2, or you can say positive 1 over negative 2, correct? Negative can go with one number or the other, not both. So I can go down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, so on and so forth. Or I can go up 1, left 2, up 1, left 2. Up one, left two. Your pick. First question. Okay. What type of line are we using? And in this case, we're using a solid line. It is equal to, so solid line. And the other question, where to shade? Unless I tell you otherwise, my choices are above or below. What symbol did I have here? Greater than is going to shade above. Okay, shading above. Be careful here. It gets a little crazy looking, doesn't it? Shading above my red line. Looks something like that, right? Again, pencil is so much easier. Especially because you can go different directions. Where is my answer? If you can even describe that. I don't know. What are you going to say, Ethan? Um, well, there's an in between just above the orange line and like below the blue line. That makes sense. But it's, I don't know how to like word it, I guess. Well, technically, it's above both lines. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to describe. Yeah. We have a big old area where red and blue are overlapping here, yes? Yeah. Okay. So, however, in this crazy sleeves here. 
So we're basically looking right here, right where this red line, or, you know, this blue line is. And then we get down here, we're angling over with the red line. Does that make sense? Okay. Again, if you'd rather shave all of your shading for the end, maybe that would be easy. Honestly, pencil might be easier. Although, I don't know. When I do mine, I'm here. I use different colors. But I can also shade in different directions, which I think sometimes helps too. Like one more horizontal shading, one more vertical shading. I think those types of differences help too. So, Okay. Questions there? This is the basic Algebra 1 review at this point. Or maybe I'm teaching Algebra 1. I don't know. Algebra 1, Algebra 2. It's all Algebra. Okay. I'm reviewing it. Now, what changes at the bottom? Yeah, we've got more than two inequalities. Now, I doubt you saw more than two in Algebra 1. Um, honestly, I haven't necessarily taught more than two in Algebra 2 before. But it is part of our more updated standards. So, we're going to look at this. Same process though, right? Pick one and start graphing. Okay, same old, same old. You know how to start this. If it's negative x plus 2y less than 1, start by solving for the y. How do I get y by itself? Subtract the x. So 2y is less than negative x plus 1. And now we need to divide by 2. y is less than what's negative x over 2. Negative one half x plus one half. What did I do? You guys are all looking at me like um, I'm crazy. You made the x positive instead. Ah, okay, okay. I'm seeing it. Okay. So I'm just copying my own problem. That's what I did, right? Which totally is messing everything else up. So, valid point. So this was supposed to originally be a negative x. So if it was negative x, I need to add x which you guys did without me, it sounds like. Except now I'm confusing everybody. So we added x. So what that really means over here is this as a plus x divided by 2. And so when I clean this up, it's a positive 1 half x. Is that better? Thank you. I know, every time I looked out there, I kept seeing more and more like looks of confusion. But I couldn't figure out what I did, so. Okay. Now are we ready to graph? Now, the unfortunate part to this there's a fraction. And I love the fraction at slope. That's perfectly fine. Why intercept fraction? Well, I didn't realize what that's what this problem was. I took this problem from the book. It seemed like a great problem at the time. Oh well, it'll work. As fractions come, one half is not four. So a y intercept of one half means I'm going to go up half a box. It is what it is. I mean, we could count by halves instead and scale this graph, but then doing the slope gets more confusing. So I'm going to go y intercept of 1 half. So now when I do my rise over 1, we're still going to rise 1 and run 2, correct? So here, when I go up 1, I'm going up to the middle of the next box, then counting over 2. Yes, you end up in the middle of the line. That's okay. Rise one, run two. Rise one, run two. We can also, of course, reverse that. Down one, left two. Not ideal, but we'll make it work. It would be harder if you had to graph the y-intercept of one-half on the computer, honestly. So. What's my question? What type of... Line? What type of line are you going to use? Mm. 
a dashed line. I didn't use a lot of them in the notes, but I did use a few. So dashed line because it is not equal to. And above or below? This is a less than symbol, so we're going to shade below. Okay, we got the main graph done. Now, these other two. They're unique because X or Y, but not both. When it is X equals or Y equals a number, it's either a horizontal or vertical line. That's what you need to come to grips with. When there's an X missing or a Y missing, it's a horizontal or vertical line. Now, when we think about this one, the idea is x equals 0. So if it's x equals 0, that means this line is going to cross the x-axis at 0. And there's no y in the problem, so it's never going to, quote, cross the y-axis. Now, this one's a little bit unique. But so if we're going to cross the x-axis at 0, well, my x-axis is horizontal. So when we cross the x-axis at 0, we're going to draw a vertical line. So we're going to be drawing a vertical line that crosses through x equals 0, which is where? That's at the origin, isn't it? So if we're crossing through the x-axis at x equals, x equals 0, what am I basically drawing? x equals 0 is on the y-axis, right? x equals 0 is the y-axis. Or you can also think x equals is always a vertical line. x equals a number, always a vertical line. Which type of line are you drawing? As in solid or dashed? It is equal to, so it is a solid line. And then we ask ourselves, do we want to shade? What's the question I always force you to ask? Above or below? So what type of line do I have here? I have an exactly vertical line. Can I ask above or below if I have a vertical line? No, you can't go above or below a vertical line. So this is the one time you get to ask yourself, instead of above or below, left or right. Now, be logical. What type of symbol is this? Greater than or equal to. Where are x values greater than or equal to zero? Greater than would make you think to the right, yes? So we're going to shade to the right. Which basically means my answer is somewhere on the right side of this graph. Sorry, more and more you're going to see why the shading is a little awkward on the bin queue. Okay, we have one more, right? Y greater than or equal to zero, which what I need your brains to think are Y equals zero. Now, think about this like we did the last one. If it's Y equals zero, it has to cross the Y axis at zero. Now, what's your Y axis look like? Y axis is up and down. So if we're crossing y-axis at 0, that means we're going to be drawing a horizontal line. Am I making sense here? I'm going to be drawing a horizontal line at 0. Well, 0 is again the origin. What am, what am I going to end up drawing here? If it's y equals 0, that is basically the x-axis. 
Okay? Y equals a number is always a horizontal line. Solid or dashed? Solid. This is a horizontal line. We're back to asking above or below. Where are we shading? Greater than is above. Okay, so above means it has to be in the top half of this graph. Okay. Be smart here. The shading is confusing you. The green told us it had to be the top half of the graph, yes? The one before that, the red, told us it had to be the right half of the graph. So where does that put us right now? That puts us just in quadrant one, right? Because it's when X is positive and Y is positive. So we're in quadrant one. What did our blue line tell us? Had to be below the blue line. So what? Should, where are my shadings? Yes? Is that where you saw? That's where my red, blue, and green shading is overlapping. So find a good way for you to do the shading that works. If you're someone you'd rather wait and put the shading on the end, that's fine. I think Excel may force you to anyways. So, okay, we've got one more to attempt to get through. Think we can do it? I know. The bell caught me off guard last period, so we'll see what happens. And I'll try not to make any mistakes this time. 2x plus y less than or equal to 10. I copied that right, right? Subtract 2x. y less than or equal to negative 2x plus 10. So that means slope is negative 2, y-intercept is 10. y-intercept of 10 means I'm going to count up 10. Slope of negative 2. It's negative 2 over 1, so I'm going... Down 2 to the right 1. You got it. Down 2, right 1. You're connecting with a solid line. And then I think I'm just going to leave it here. We're going to experiment this time. Where's my shading going to be? Since it was less than, it was going to be below. I'm going to hold on to that thought and come back to it later. I may regret this. We may look. We'll see. Okay. Next one. And this probably will work decently because I color code. If I didn't color code, it might be a little more. Those of you using just pencil might be a little more confusing. How do I solve for y? Subtract x. 10 minus x, so negative x plus 10 divide by 2, y less than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 5, yes? Now, can you listen for a moment or pause for a moment? One thing that came to my attention in homework. A few of the problems I picked, you have a negative y value. Now, can you graph this as negative y? No, we need to move that negative y. Can you would multiply or divide to do that? And reverse that sign. I'll repeat that again in a moment. 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Game, scores, or excuse me, game and door prizes. Our
the National Honor Society will be meeting tomorrow during homeroom A and B for all members in Mr. Summer's room. There will be an IUK admission representative here for any juniors or seniors interested in hearing more about IUK programs and questions, have questions regarding any admission. Also, Purdue University will have a representative here on Wednesday, September 14th in the pres uh, presentation room. If you are interested, please re-register in the guidance office. If you are a student driver and have not purchased your parking pass, you need to do so before tomorrow. After tomorrow, there will be a warning sticker taped to your window of your vehicle and it may be towed at your expense. All Tri Central athletes, there will be a Citizen Pork Festival Parade on Saturday, September 10th. Boys basketball will be providing a decorated float and free flag. They will meet at 1.30 in the Citizen Elementary parking lot where PC pillars and bring candy. If you have any questions, please talk to Coach Hyman. Tomorrow for lunch, there will be chicken and noodles, mashed potatoes, green beans, applesauce, and or raisins, a roll with butter, and milk. Athletics tonight. The boys soccer team will travel to Anderson Press. Their game starts at 5.30 p.m. The girls soccer team will host Eastern. Their game also starts at 5.30 p.m. The middle school football team will travel to, to Taylor. Their game starts at 4.30. And varsity and JV volleyball will play tonight at 6 p.m. against Atlantic Prairie. With the following students, please report to the high school office. Gabe Fowler. Jonathan Louis, Justin Lovell, Landon Hale, Dave Horn, Paul Henry, Jaron Helmrich, Brian Baldwin, Brayden Acord, and Aiden Star. Have a great night, Trojan. Okay, guys. I did the lines while you're while she was talking. Okay. Now, one thing I was talking about, guys. If you divide by a negative, or if you have to multiply or divide by a negative to get rid of a negative y. Please remember, what does that do to our less than greater than sign? It flips it. That will matter on a couple of homework problems. Thank you. Now, where is the shading here? The horizontal line told me it has to be above. My vertical line told me it has to be to the right. So right there, I know I am in first quadrant, yes? My red line said below. My blue line said below. We end up right there. Okay? We end up right there. Homework. You have 10 problems. Um, I don't think it should be too bad. I'm sure you'll complain tomorrow if it is worse than what I'm thinking. Um, it's lesson 1 6, part 2. And if there's questions on how I graphed that last one, I know I was kind of putting it up as she, she was going through announcements, but you got the basics, right? Have a good night, guys.